Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. And we're going to be talking about some Impact Wrestling. And we're going to start off talking about the ratings and the viewership for Impact Wrestling on Access TV. And some potentially, I would guess, if you're an Impact Wrestling official, executive, anthem, etc. Some disappointing news when it comes to the viewership and ratings for Impact on Access TV for the post Slamversary episode of Impact on Access TV. And that is because Thursday's edition of Impact Wrestling drew 104,000 viewers on Access TV. This is according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, who, by the way, I probably should do a shout out to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics because since the decline uh, or the demise, shall we say, of Showbuzz Daily, Brandon's just been doing a real, honestly, a spectacular job in terms of putting the information out there regarding ratings, viewership figures. That's not just for Impact. That's for pretty much every promotion out there, whether it's WWE, AW, Impact, wherever. He's just been doing a stellar job. He's got a Patreon. Be sure to check that out and subscribe. Really, he's doing a tremendous job. So he's reporting, as I mentioned, that Impact Wrestling drew 104,000 viewers on Access TV last week. Now, this is actually down. This is down 4.6% from last week's 109,000 viewers on Access TV. Now, Thursday's episode drew a 0.04 rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic. Now, this is up, though, from last week's 0.2 rating in the same demographic. So the show, of course featured the likes of Jay White and Mickey James making advertised ahead of time appearances. Of course, Jay White made his Impact debut at Slammiversary and that big cliffhanger. You had the knockouts, uh, Tag Team Champions Havoc and Rosemary versus Fire and Flavor. You had Chris Bay versus Rohit Raju and more and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, if we look at this, you can talk about the demographic and I'm sure people will. I know people will say, well, when it's AEW, you talk about the demographic and all that kind of stuff. But the issue is, if you're going to really talk about the demographic here, when it comes to Impact Wrestling, the numbers are so small that you can kind of get a little bit lost and a little bit caught up in that whole demographic situation there. So for me, uh, you know, that, I, I wouldn't get too too caught up in that. I think the big thing to talk about is the viewership. Of course, it's the viewership because let's face it, for for what Slammiversary was, and it was a very, very, very good pay-per-view and a really successful pay-per-view, I think, in terms of the buzz that it generated on social media. It was trending, I believe, worldwide, certainly in the United States. I had a lot of people talking about it the next day because of these you know, former WWE stars showing up, whether it was Chelsea Green, etc. Mickey James made an appearance. Of course, the Jay White appearance as well. All of that kind of stuff had a lot of people talking, and rightfully so. And let's face it, the reason Slammiversary ended the way it did, the reason why they suddenly went off the air. The reason why they had Jay White come out, have a bit of a standoff with the Impact World Champion Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. And then you have D'Lo Brown and Matt Strucker go, wait, someone's come to the ring. And then they just cut off, fade to black like we're watching an episode of The Sopranos or something like that. The reason they did that cliffhanger was to get people watching Impact on Access TV because recently the viewership figures haven't been too great. And I think Impact thought heading into Slammiversary, the viewership figures for Impact Wrestling would rise as they did last year, but they haven't. And they they were not doing that. And I think Impact Wrestling was concerned so much so that they ended arguably their biggest pay-per-view of the year. I know Bound for Glory is scheduling and, and looks to be bigger than Slammiversary this year. At least we hope so. But certainly, you know, a big historic event for Impact Wrestling. They ended it on a cliffhanger for the specific reason to get people watching Impact on Access TV. And it didn't work. Ultimately, let's be totally honest here. It did not work. We're talking again, 104,000 viewers. Now, obviously, there is different ways to explain this. And obviously, I think the biggest one, the biggest one to explain it is now that we have live fans returning, now that Impact Wrestling is still taping the, the, the television the same way they were taping it before, the taping it the way that they have for a long, long time. Impact very, very, very rarely goes live for television episodes now. Because of that, you have spoilers, and the spoilers were widely available. They were out there. I mean, we reported on them here on the channel. We gave people a spoiler warning, but they were out there, and they weren't hard to find, especially nowadays. This is why I always say when it comes to spoilers as well, that I know people will go, I don't want to get spoiled, and I don't think anyone actively does, but especially nowadays when we live in this reality where social media is what it is, okay? Social media is what it is, and you can come across spoilers without even trying at this point. You can just be innocently scrolling through social media and you can see it. And that does play a factor into someone like Impact Wrestling. It does, because let's face it, despite the big events that did happen Thursday night on Access TV, despite having Mickey James show up ahead of time, being advertised ahead of time, despite having Jay White advertised ahead of time and teasing about Chris Bay joining the Bullet Club and all that kind of stuff, ultimately, 
people knew what was going to happen. Impact Wrestling, of course, they have a smaller fan base than WWE and AEW. They have a loyal fan base, but they also have a relatively smart fan base. And I don't mean in terms of intelligence. I mean in terms of pro wrestling insider information. Most Impact Wrestling fans, I would argue that the majority of them, 90%, 95%, maybe even 99% of them are smart to the business and they know what it is and they read pro wrestling websites. They watch YouTube channels like this. They watch YouTube videos like this. They follow accounts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. knowing what's going on in Impact Wrestling. So you could argue that a lot of people last week didn't tune into Impact Wrestling because they knew what was going to happen. There was no real reason... If you were a casual Impact fan, not a diehard, hardcore Impact Wrestling fan, if you were just a casual fan, you read about the results online, you read about the spoilers online, and then you thought, well, you know, I've got other stuff going on 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 Thursday nights, or I'm pretty tapped out of pro wrestling. It's on every single night this week, and I'm still coming off the Slammiversary event last weekend and Money in the Bank and all that stuff that's going on in the world of pro wrestling right now, and I'm interested in finding out about CM Punk and Daniel Bryan going to AEW and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Maybe that was a reason for people to say, you know, I'm not going to watch it because I know what's going to happen. Realistically, let's be honest here, on paper, considering what the episode was, considering uh, what they did at the end of Slammiversary with that cliffhanger, considering all the people that made their returns or debuts at Slammiversary, whether it was Chelsea Green, whether it was No Way Jose, whether it was the tease of Aiden English, whether it was Mickey James, whether it was Jay White, whether it was Finn Juice, whether it was all of these names that did return at Slammiversary or make their debuts, all of that plus plus the just the just general fallout of Slammiversary, that should be enough to do at least 120, 130, 140,000 viewers on Access TV. And it wasn't. And it wasn't for whatever reason, it wasn't enough. And I think that's what they'll be impact will obviously be most concerned about because if you go back and track it this year since realistically june since the beginning of june the numbers just haven't been good if you look back at earlier this year earlier this year around february time you know talking about just after no surrender they were getting nearly two hundred thousand viewers on access tv the february 16 episode i got the list in front of me now the february 16 episode of impact wrestling on access tv drew 197,000 live live viewers that was the post no surrender episode Uh, And that was really the peak this year, to be honest. But in January and February and certainly early March, the numbers were solid. And, you know, the first Thursday night episode actually drew 168,000 viewers. Again, the numbers were solid. But realistically, since June, since June uh, this year, they've just they've been struggling impact for whatever reason. And I don't think they realize why the June 3rd episode drew 143,000 live viewers, 143,000 live viewers on Access TV. Since then, 124 111, 111 again, of course, 69. That was because of the issue with the DVR stuff. But 120, 109. I really think, if you look at the last two weeks as well, that's the really damning stuff here. You look at the the episode, the, the Go Home Show to Slammiversary and the post Slammiversary episode. The Go Home Show doing 109,000 viewers on Access TV. The, the post Slammiversary episode doing 104,000 viewers. That, that, that's that got to be disappointing. I mean, it, it just has to be. That has to be uh, disappointing, I think, for, uh, for, for you know, for, for, for everyone involved. Everyone involved. So <sighs> time will tell what Impact Wrestling, time will tell what Impact Wrestling reacts to this, what their explanation about it might be or their feelings as to what it, the reasons behind it. Time will tell if this will continue the next couple of weeks because, of course, the next few weeks are taped. And that's going to be interesting because if the numbers continue to go down, then obviously they will use these these spoilers as a reason behind it. They'll say the, re- the reason why people aren't watching is because people know what's going to happen. You know, like it for better or for worse, when crowds weren't there, there was nobody to spoil what was going to happen here. And we had more uh, people tune in because of it. So that's certainly going to be interesting as well. So I think it's going to be really interesting. We're probably, I know people, some people don't like talking about ratings, but I think we are going to be talking more about ratings over the course of the next few weeks because it's going to be really interesting to see these impact, especially the viewership uh, numbers of impact on Access TV over the next few weeks because it's going to be, we'll have to wait and see realistically are the, the spoilers going to really affect this? And that's going to be fascinating to see. It really is. Now let's move on. Let's talk about Matt Cardona. I know I'm super, super, super behind. We didn't do any videos over the weekend, so we haven't, we just haven't had the opportunity to talk about this, but I do want to talk about it still. And that is, of course, that uh, GCW homecoming night one last weekend. Matt Cardona shockingly won the GCW World Championship. He defeated Nick Gage. I did watch the match, and um, 
I, I thought it was. I thought it was. A, I thought it was a lot of fun. And as someone who hasn't watched a ton of GCW stuff, I'm not going to proclaim to be an expert at all. But I was closely following the whole Matt Cardona and Nick Gage story. I loved the work that they did, especially the social media stuff. I thought was tremendous. And I was fascinated. I was absolutely fascinated by it because for me, it reminded me of, of Jerry Lawler and Jim Cornette showing up at, G, uh, at ECW in the 90s. So out of place, such a square peg in a round hole, just doesn't fit. I thought it's brilliant. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The match itself, look, it's not my kind of pro wrestling, I'll be honest. I like hardcore matches. It wasn't a death match. It was hardly Nick Gage's most violent match you've ever seen or anything like that. There was light tubes, there was glass, there was that kind of stuff. It was hardly a, a death match or anything like that. It was hardly Nick Gage's most violent match he's had in his entire career. To be honest, it was probably, you know, there was there was light tubes, there was glass, and there was a pizza cut, which I guess, you know, is, is violence. Uh, but, you know, and, and Matt Cardona, you know, his fair share, he took his punishment and he bled quite a lot. I thought it was fun. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Anyway, Matt Cardona got the shock victory. And immediately after the match, of course, and this is what got people talking about this match quite a lot, was that the GCW fans in attendance, they threw trash into the ring. Now, Cardona ran off leaving Nick Gage in the ring to the disappointment and disbelief of the fans over the result. Now, I saw people like Dave Meltzer and some people criticize this of when they were throwing the trash in the ring and they were saying it's an embarrassment on the business and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was laughable that Meltzer would say that, to be honest. And I think subsequently GCW have released a T-shirt essentially mocking Meltzer. Or literally they've got the, an image of the tweets and they've put it on a T-shirt, which I think is tremendous, by the way. I think Meltzer getting angry about that is ridiculous. And the GCW owner, was it Brett Lauderdale, has come out and basically said, no, there were no plants. We didn't have anyone start off, you know, the situation by throwing trash in the ring or anything like that. That was completely, you know, um, organic and... That was just the fans being the fans. But Mounts are getting angry saying someone could have got hurt or the wrestlers in the ring could have got hurt or someone in attendance got could have got hurt. I think in reality, look, I wasn't a big fan of WCW fans throwing trash in the ring all the time in the 90s. I thought it was overdone. I thought it was stupid. But last uh, last weekend's match between Cardona and Gage, I think suited it. It, it worked. The GCW fans, they know what's going on. They're all smart to the business. They're not there. They, tr they don't truly believe what they're seeing, you know. They realize it's a show and they realize the situation and they're just a bigger character as Nick Gage or Matt Cardona or anyone else. They know the situation and they're rabid. They're like the ECW fan base in the 90s, but jacked up to another level. And that's what this whole story is about. Having a, you know, a real fighter like Nick Gage go up against a pro wrestling Hollywood WWE superstar like Zack Ryder. That's the point. It's getting heat. And for Dave Meltzer, of all, you know, Dave Meltzer's reported on pro wrestling for years and we're talking WWE, WCW, ECW, all of those Japanese promotions, all that kind of stuff. And he's seen far worse than that, far worse and far more stuff that's been embarrassing to pro wrestling. I thought it was just very, very odd that Meltzer would say that. And yeah, but, but look, I'm, I'm one of those people. I respect Dave Meltzer. Of course you have to. But there have been plenty of things, plenty of things that Dave Meltzer says over the years that I don't agree with. I didn't agree with him when he was going crazy at Money in the Bank, when they were having the Peacock issues. He's like, they need to shut, they need to shut the event down, stop streaming. If there was any other promotion in the world, they'd stop the show and wait till they could get it back on. It's like, seriously? Seriously? Yes, Peacock was down for what, 10 minutes, five minutes? You have to realize as well that the rest of the entire world <laughs> is watching that event. People in the United Kingdom, people all through Europe, South America, you know, wherever. The Asia, my goodness, the Asian market is watching that. And they're going to just shut it down because Peacock isn't working? That's a Peacock problem. It's not WWE's fault. And for the fans in attendance, sorry, we've got to shop, stop the show for five minutes because Dave Meltzer isn't happy because his Peacock's not working. I mean, come on. So some stuff like that, I just, you know, you take it for what it's worth. It's what it, what it is. But I enjoyed it. And uh, Cardona's going to run with the bout for a bit. He might show up on uh, uh, Fight for the Fallen tonight. Who knows? But I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I really did. Now, speaking of Matt Cardona, his uh, fiance Charissa Green, is back in a cast, unfortunately. She says she's back wearing a cast on her arm. Now, of course, uh, Green returned to Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary last weekend, teaming with Cardona to defeat Brian Myers and Tennille Dashwood. I mean, the prior weekend, actually, wasn't last weekend. It's just time at the moment. It just blurs into one. Now, anyway, uh, in the match, Green was wearing a cast on her arm at Slammiversary. It was noted on commentary she had been cleared, medically cleared for competition. But in an update, Cre uh, Green tweeted x-ray photos before going to the doctor and noted she planned to show him the video of her destroyer at Slammiversary. 
He said, uh, she said this quote, I showed my surgeon the video. He laughed and said, I knew it. And then proceeded to put me back in a cast. Uh, she recently um, discussed her return at Slammiversary on the Green with Envy, Envy podcast and confirmed she wrestled at Slammiversary with a broken arm, noting there is no health commission in the state of Tennessee, which would have prevented her from wrestling while injured. So she was injured. She wasn't medically cleared, as they said on commentary. She just, she can do what she wants, basically. So... I don't know. I think she has to be careful because, what, she's broken the arm, was it twice, three times, something like that now? Um, and you just don't want it to be a situation where it's a constant thing. I, I think she did wrestle, I think, at the at the, at the past tapings because I know she's involved in the homecoming tournament with, with Cardona as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. If, if it's her, you know, she's with Ring of Honor now. She's with Impact Wrestling. There's no need to rush it now. She's back. So if it takes, what, six extra weeks, what's six extra weeks? It's not a big deal. So time will only tell as to what happens uh, when it comes to her wearing a cast. And to be honest, she might just keep going to Tennessee and keep wrestling. I wouldn't advise that, but, I mean, she certainly could do it. Now, speaking about Impact Homecoming, and by the way, we will be doing a watch along and post show reaction stream for Homecoming this Saturday because it will, of course, airs on Impact Plus. Now, several new tag teams have been announced for Impact Wrestling's Homecoming tournament this coming weekend. Saturday's Impact Homecoming is, of course, on Impact Plus, and it will feature a one night mixed tag team tournament to crown the king and queen of Impact. Homecoming will also feature Eddie Edwards versus W. Morrissey in a hardcore match, too. So, here is an updated lineup for the tag teams for the tournament announced so far as i mentioned you've got cardona and chelsea green you've got crazy steve and the knockouts tag team champion rosemary you've got little pt pump pt williams and thick mama pump jordan grace you've got tommy dreamer and rachel ellering and brian myers and a mystery partner uh of course homecoming was taped last week at that big impact wrestling television tapings in nashville tennessee don't worry we're not going to say any spoilers here now or anything like that so you know, and we won't be doing a predictions video because, of course, it's, it's silly to do a prediction. I've seen the spoilers. So, I mean, I could do a prediction video, but I'm pretty sure I'll probably get all the predictions right in that one, considering I know what happened. So we're not going to do a prediction video. I might do a preview video, talk about the match. But even then, I feel a bit, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. I'm really conscious on not wanting to spoil um, the, the event for anyone that hasn't seen the spoilers or anything like that. But we will be doing a watch along. We'll be doing a post-show reaction stream like we do for all of the Impact Plus events and Impact Pay Views on Saturday. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner, click the notification bell. You'll be notified when we go live uh, for the uh, for the, the streams at the weekend as well. Uh, there's been an update as well when it comes to Triple uh, XL because Triple XL, AC Romero, and Larry D were missing from the last television tapings, and it led to a few people questioning what was going on with the tag team. Had they been released? Uh, were they still under contract? What was the situation? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, a report by Fightful Select, which of course is Fightful's Patreon service, so be sure to check them out and subscribe. They are reporting that AC Romero and Larry D, the team of Triple XL was missing from the last set of Impact Wrestling tapings in Nashville. Now, according to Fightful Select's Impact Wrestling sources, they have confirmed that both are still with the company. They're still both under contract, but haven't provided a reason as to why they were not present at the tapings. I would suggest maybe an injury, uh, maybe a situation where they're just creative, didn't have anything for them. There's no point traveling in. We are still in some kind of restrictions, especially with the pandemic. And there have been rises of cases in certain states. And maybe it was just a case of impact good. We don't really have anything planned for you. We've got a pretty stacked roster and a busy time coming out of Slammiversary. So there's just, there's no need. There's no need. We don't have anything for you. Come back next time kind of situation. Or they're planning something else for the future. But they are still with Impact Wrestling. So no need to worry about both of them. Finally, we spoke about Jordan Grace when it comes to the Impact Homecoming Tournament. Well, former Knockouts champion Jordan Grace uh, over the weekend competed, competed in the World Natural Powerlifting Federation in Georgia. And she broke three state and national records, squat, bench press and deadlift in her 165 pounds weight class. This is what she had to say, quote, made weight, broke all three state and national records for all three lifts. First place and overall uh, best overall lifter. Thank you so much for all the support. I love you all so much. This is just the beginning. Now, Grace's tag team partner, Rachel Ellering, traveled six hours to watch the competition and document how Grace performed, as you can see on the tweets on social media. She said, quote, so proud of you, Jordan Grace. You've worked so hard for this in one of her tweets. And they're all on social media, so I recommend to check them out. Huge congratulations to Jordan Grace. I mean, you know, she's a pro wrestler. It's coming straight into breaking national and um, and state powerlifting records. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So huge congratulations to her, really and truly. Anyway, guys, as always, this is just one minute.
comment, opinion, what are your thoughts on all of these Impact Wrestling news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really just helps out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.